Metallurgy, lecture number 11. Heat treatments, basically what everyone over here. The first one, a pretty famous one, well known I guess. Oops, annealing. Everybody heard of annealing before in some way, shape, or form? Or soften them. That's basically what you're doing, you're softening the metal. This is a heat treatment. That is done to almost all metals. I did mean all the two L's. To remove the effects of work hardening. Treatments such as forgings and thermal hardings. So this is kind of, we talked about how to harden materials before, we're trying to bring it back. So the machinists can machine it without breaking their precious little carbides. That was a shot at machinists. Direct. Yeah. What do they call the welders, knuckle, knuckle draggers? Window lickers. Oh! Annealing is done. To relax the grain structure. It is done in two basic steps. Heat treatments are, are basically done the same steps, kind of. There's a little bit of variance here and there, but usually number one, heat to a prescribed temperature. You're going to heat it up. Then you're going to slow cool in a controlled manner. Usually the slower the cool, the better off you are. So you heat it up, stuff's vibrating like crazy. And you let it cool it. So it kind of solidifies in where it wants to be, I guess you could say. Making it not hard. We're doing something where we want to make sure it's soft out there for, for uh, I don't know, annealing a weld or something, something that's been heated up. We usually just throw in the rod of it if it's, if it's small enough. So that's 250 degrees. So we leave it in there at 250 degrees, that's how long it takes to cook, or that's the temperature it's going to, so you can imagine how long it takes to get 250 degrees in an oven if it was just, you know, 1500 degrees. That's a really slow cool, right? Which is good. If you live in ghetto fabulous and you don't have a, an oven, they bury it in sand, right? There's no three. What's this thing doing to me? Reasons to anneal. This 
to make metal softer. Good, easier to machine. Have you ever buy a carbide before? I bought them. You know what the cost? It'll make zero go over prices with you guys as far as carbides or tools. I try to bring in when I do a quote to the welders and show them what stuff costs, and then they go, Why do I gotta pay these lab fees? Or, you know, be nice to your tools because they cost this much money, or don't waste metal because it costs this much money. But carbide inserts can be anywhere from, usually, they're gonna be over 10 bucks of an insert. The ones on the CNC machines that we bought last time were 20 bucks an insert. So when you break a carbide, that's 20 bucks, gone. If it costs 20 bucks, depending on the guy, right? But they're definitely expensive. So like the lab fees for the Mech Tech program are like 20 bucks, so if you break a car ride, you just went through your lab fee. Welders don't get it that nice, they have 130 bucks. But they have a lot of consumables. So softer metal makes it so you don't fry car rides, right? So think about if you're in a production setup, or you have one of the tools that has like eight of them on it. You make it softer, it's easier to machine, you're saving a lot of money, right? You can machine hard stuff, but the, it's just more difficult to do when you're gonna fry carbides. To remove deformation caused by stampings and forgings. Sometimes you have to have to do that. I always think of like like a mower deck when I think of a stamping for some reason because they cost so much money and they always break, right? <coughs> if they did a heat treatment on that, it would be less likely to break. Because when you're taking a stamping, now if you think about a mower deck, you've got these tool steel, it's just basically forming the shell of a mower deck. Everywhere where that's bent, there's all kinds of stress, right? You don't just bend it and have no stress in it, right? So what you do is you kneel it to make, take that stress out. But are they gonna do that? No. Because it increases the, the product, or decreases the productivity, increases the time it takes, and it's gonna cost more money because then you gotta put it in another, right? Plus, what do they want to sell you in like 10 years? Another mower deck, right? About once or twice a year, maintenance and bring over their mower decks, and right on the edges of every single thing that's welded on there will be cracked. Because not only is there a ton of stress in it when you do a stamping, what's the application for a mower deck? Is there any vibration going on? Nothing but vibration, right? All day long. So it breaks. But if you wanted it to not break, you would anneal it, right? Heat it up, let stuff go where it needs to go to make it not brittle. Plus you're work hardening it because you're squishing, you're compressing the, the metals on one side. It's intensive stress, stress on one side, compression on the other, throw a little torsion, then let it vibrate for 10 years. It's gonna break eventually, right? Plus it's loaded with contamination. Grass is basically acidic, right? Plus they never, you know, people don't want to ever clean it out. Now I see they got the new thing where they plug the hose into the mower deck, they turn the mower deck on, it's supposed to clean it. Anybody have that? Does it actually work? Yeah. yeah it well, does work? Right. Work mm. Really? No. No? You still gotta clean it at the end of the season, like with a pressure washer. I never clean my mower decks. Back into the barn, I'll see you in the spring. That's why there'll be a hole in yours. I rebuild mine all out of stainless. So when I fix mower decks, I always put stainless over it. That way you don't gotta worry about it. Now the only mower deck that I think that exists that is stainless steel is, anybody know? You should know. You should know, but he's not here. You ever heard of Dixie Chopper? I was gonna guess that. Oh yeah. They cost a bazillion dollars, but they're stainless. 
they go really fast. Yeah. My buddy's dad used to uh, sell them. And he'd pop wheelies on them. And they got wheelie bars. And, yeah. But they're stainless. You don't ever have to worry about it. So they're going to sell you one more deck, where John Deere is going to sell you two or three, right? And more decks are expensive. You buy them from, like, you go down to the actual dealership, right? But if you wanted to make them nice and soft and not have to fix it after 10 years, you're going to anneal it. To produce a product that can be more easily form in shapes. So if you're going to do a stamping, if you heated it up and made it soft, it would form better. What is a more about? A what? What is a more about? More about? What is this one? A more deck? Yeah. A lawnmower deck. <laughs> oh, so like a big track or something? The duck that goes underneath it. Oh. Do you really get push more? Well, technically your push more is the same thing, yeah. Those are stamped. Yeah, they're stamped. I'm just trying to think if there's seams on there. Uh, they're stamped. Have you ever seen the movie Eight Mile with Slim Shady? Yeah? He was stamping in the movie, right? Do you cut all this stuff out? No. No? It's just ramble a lot. You can make it so he has to cut it out. Shh. <laughs> That's stamping, right? When he's on the line, that dead end, whatever they called that Ford plant he was working at. Take a picture of a mower deck. Pick it up. That's called unskilled labor. You don't want to be that person. Tempering. Sometimes referred to as drawing. So tempering is not going to take it as soft as annealing. You want it still to remain somewhat hard, but you don't want it to be brittle. It is reheating of martensitic steels. I'm going to watch a video of them doing this here. Crazy knife people, right? It's a big hobby now. People make their own knives. They have to temper them. Heating is done below. Critical temperature line. So to find that, you would look on one of the phase diagrams. So the heat has got to be done lower the critical temperature line. It's not high heat; it's low. Lower, I guess. Tempering is done between one and one half hours to three hours. So it's low temperature soaking, right? 
they're going to have for an extended period of time at low temperatures. Again, stuff is moving around, becoming less hard. Because you want something like a knife blade to be hard but not brittle, right? I broke a few knives in my day, just the tips, but I was abusing them. You don't open up a paint can with a knife, right? You use a screwdriver. No, you don't use a screwdriver. They have a little tool, right? Usually comes when you buy paint. Not only when you break the screwdriver, you also do paint on it. Then it won't fit in your slot. It is then cooled. And room temperature. People that do their own knives literally put them in their ovens in their in their actual uh, kitchens. What are you baking? You know, switchblade. <laughs> they have those in New York. It's legal. Normalizing. Normalizing of the grain structure. In steels, does not occur unless the steel is specifically Alloyed with boron or vanadium. Vanadium is good for one thing the coating on the tools that you get from Harbor Freight. You ever notice they always say coated with vanadium? Everybody know what Harbor Freight is? Crappy tools. Well, I'd say low-end tool store. If you, if you know you're going to break your tools, you, uh, you get them there, right? Good warranty, too. Good warranty. They have warranty? Yeah. Really? Uh, 90 days. Really? I'm a battery broken on my impact. Took it in and got another one. Huh, I didn't know that. I remember I was doing a job with a guy, and this guy pulled out a, a grinder that was from Harbor Freight, because their brand is what, Chicago Electric? Yeah. And I was working with kind of an animal, and he, he looked at it, he goes, this is a Harbor Freight. I looked over, he had it on fire in like five minutes. <laughs> it was on fire. Well, then I, I, the house I bought from a guy, he left one of those there, and I've been trying to break it, and it won't break, so I don't know. I guess maybe, of course, that's an old one, too. But all our tools are chrome vanadium. Chrome vanadium. These elements are required to <laughs> nucleate grain formation. in the solid state during high temperature soaking. When we're saying soaking, we're talking about soaking in heat, right? Not, uh, you know, sitting in a bathtub, I guess.
most literature describe normalizing as the heating of the steel to approximately Thousand seven hundred degrees American or Fahrenheit, followed by cooling and still air or by furnace. So we're just talking about throwing it in the oven, right? Really slow cool. 1700 degrees, that's pretty hot, right? You're changing colors at that temperature, right? A solid state recrystallization and homogenization of the alloying elements. And grain structure take place during normalizing. So it's making everything the same, the same consistency throughout the actual metal. So you wouldn't have a cluster of alloying elements here. Cluster of alloying elements over here, it's all the same. The grain structure is all the same. It allows it time to grow to where it wants to be, making it nice and soft. Normalizing is sometimes referred to as full annealing. And then the number 1084 is on there. I don't know what that's for. So we're going to move on. Recrystallization in a solid state, right? So basically, grain growth is happening, <laughs> things like that, to make it nice and soft. Time is flying. Factors that affect recrystallization. I guess we'll we'll stop there for today. It is Friday, right? And then we'll take a look at a tempering day. Because we only have 14 minutes.